Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you one of the most common ways that your social media accounts can be stolen by hackers. I'm talking about your Facebook, your Instagram, emails, even your crypto wallets. And yes, this is how YouTubers get hacked. I'm talking about the notorious information stealer known as Redline. I'm going to show you how it works, how you can analyze it yourself safely, and most importantly, how you can protect yourself. So what Redline Stealer is, is a sophisticated piece of malware with one heinous goal. Scan your system and steal any and all personal data, including save logins, documents, crypto wallets, and pretty much anything of value and secretly send it off to a C2 server. A C2 server is what remotely controls the virus on your system as it devours all you hold dear. Now I'm going to show you exactly how Redline Stealer works by analyzing it through Any.Run. Any.Run is an online malware analysis service that you can get started with absolutely free. The only thing you will need is you will need a business email. A regular Gmail email will not work. I just spoke to Any.Run about this requirement for a business email address. If you don't have one, you can still access Any.Run. Just contact them through Discord and they will set you up with access. I'll put the link to their Discord in the description. The first thing we need to do is get a sample of Redline that we can actually test with. The easiest way to get it is to click over here on reports. And these are all submissions that other users have tested on any.run. And we can just go up here to the search, type Redline. And then the search results, you're gonna see that these are all instances where Redline was detected. And the one that I'm looking for is the one that has Stealer, MetaStealer, and Redline in it because Redline is a stealer. The family it's in is MetaStealer, which is a whole family of, of stealing software. And then this one I found good results with, with NetReactor as a detection. Anyway, I'm going to pick the B1D049996 executable. And you can actually pick whichever one you want. You might get different results, different variations. Um, but for this one, I'm going to use this first one here. And then when you're inside this simulation or this test that another user did, you don't have to watch anything. If you want, you can go through here. You can see what other person's results were. I'm just going to get the sample by clicking right here. You just download that. I already have mine downloaded. It's gonna download it as a zip file that's password protected, but something very important you need to know. Don't download the sample and extract it on your own computer and run it. Don't accidentally do it. You're only going to download the zip file so that we can upload it to any.run. You don't want to extract it, then run it on your own computer. There's an active virus inside. It's password protected so that these accidents don't happen. If you're not confident that you can handle this active virus in a zip file, password protected, without possibly infecting yourself, then just don't do it and follow along and let me do it for you and enjoy the show. All right, guys, I really care about you and I just don't want you guys to get infected while following one of my guides. Anyway, let's get back to it. All right now that I have the sample downloaded, I'm gonna go ahead and click new analysis. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click upload right here. And then I'm gonna pick my sample, which I just downloaded, click open. And then on start object from, to make this easier on us, I'm gonna change that to desktop so that I don't have to go hunting around for that file. Change the duration to 660. And then on my operating system, on your free account, you'll have Windows 7 32-bit and Windows 10 64-bit. For this test, Windows 10 64-bit is perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and keep that selected. I'm gonna leave everything else the same and then I'm gonna get, go ahead and click run a public analysis. And what a public analysis means is that anyone can see this. We Other people can use our tests and get information from it and it's not private, that's all that means. And that's perfectly fine. All right, it's loading up Windows 10 for us and it's already opened up the zip file we have with WinRAR. And I'm gonna go ahead and extract it to the desktop. And like I said, it's password protected for our protection so that we don't accidentally double click on it and run it from Windows. And the password is the word infected, all lowercase. I'll show the password so you can see. And all, all samples from any.run and in fact, most online repositories of malware samples that's the same password, which will be infected. We're gonna go ahead and click OK. And then we've extracted it to the desktop. It's in this folder right here. And there's an extra layer of protection in that it's a bin file. So we're gonna go ahead and rename it. And all we're gonna do is erase the .bin at the end, leaving .exe behind. Now we can double click on it. 
And right when I double click on it, the action starts happening and this will greatly surprise you. As soon as we double click on it, nothing visually happened here. We can't see anything happen. We double clicked it. There was no pop-up. There was no console, no black screen. It seems to have done nothing here. But what's going on in the background is, is this executable is about to do some dropping. And right down here on connections, we have some outgoing connections, but nothing clearly obviously uh, obvious as malicious yet. There is this executable, but that's not doing anything wrong. Okay, now what happened over here is, is our executable also injected into conhost. Let's actually see right here. If we click on it, we can see exactly what it did. Actions look like stealing a personal data, steals credentials from web browsers, and then MetaStealer has been detected by Suricata, connects to an unusual port. So the way this thing stays hidden is uh, by something called process hollowing. So it injects into uh, into valid processes, um, which keeps it keeps it out of sight for the most part. Okay, under connections, right here with this fire icon, this is connecting out to a Canadian IP address, and it's labeled as malicious with this fire icon here. Now, if we go over here to the threats tab, this is the network threats. We have potentially bad traffic. This is where it's communicating out to a C2 server. We can actually see what it's doing over here under the stream data and then click text. Okay, it's connecting out. That looks like a login. And then it sent this, this connected to the C2 server. It received instructions back. The response. Okay, just some instructions. Okay, this one is where it gets really scary. So the instructions from the C2 server located here is telling the virus to go get all of this information. Everything from the user's um, documents, every text, doc, key, wallet, seed, pretty much every kind of important document that a hacker would want to take from you. It's also going after browser data, uh, cookies, any saved logins, if you're still logged into a website, saved passwords, that if you're saved to your browser, they're unencrypted, and it goes for everything. Steam accounts, every type of browser is listed here, and on the bottom, every type of, of a cryptocurrency wallet is listed here from Monero, Ethereum, all these different types of wallets are listed and they're told to go for it. And then if we go down here, network Trojan was detected. We go over to stream data again, and it's more of the same, but we can see exactly what it goes for. And if we go actually up here, one of these actually describes all the applications on this computer, but I'm not seeing it here. But what's happened right now is that you saw absolutely nothing. If this was your computer, you would have double clicked on that executable and you would have saw nothing. CPU usage is low. RAM usage didn't hardly go up at all. But in the background, this thing is going through every browser, every document on your computer and exfiltrating it and sending it to the C2 server. It's also stolen all of your saved logins, any, any kind type of credentials. Steam accounts, Facebook, YouTube, it's gone. A lot of guys on my on my channel have been commenting and they're telling me these horror stories about how they're locked out of their emails, their Steam, everything's changed, the reset, the two-factor authentication, all changed. And a lot of times they haven't been able to get their accounts back. And also, this virus is particularly difficult to detect because more often than not, the, the hacker will make the executable over 600 megabytes. Now, why is that important? If you're trying to upload a file to VirusTotal or you're using your own virus scanner, oftentimes these will tell them to not scan files that are over 600 megabytes because it slows down the scan. So they make it just big enough to, to skate underneath the rug and avoid detection. Now, as far as how to protect yourself from Redline, I usually recommend a strong antivirus. And yes, I do. And I have a whole tier list on my favorite antivirus programs. But since I gave you some reasons as to why it may still get around antivirus programs, you have to exercise a bit of caution. Obviously, don't run programs from people you don't know. The most common way Redline has been distributed is through cracked programs, piracy, things like that, but also through emails and phishing. They're very smart, so there's innocent ways you can get infected as well. And in the event that you are infected and it gets past your defenses, are your logins encrypted? 
So I always recommend that you get a good password manager. Now a free one that you could use is Bitwarden. It's open source, it's one of the best on the planet, it's absolutely free. I do have paid ones that I can recommend, but there's already a great free one and that's Bitwarden and I can put the link for that in the description and that's fantastic. It will encrypt your logins. So let's assume you do get, get Redline Stealer. It won't be able to get your logins because they're not unencrypted and unprotected. They're in a vault. They can't get them. They, they can't use them. Now your other documents, if you're saving passwords to text files and they steal that, maybe consider using encryption and encrypting your, 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 your files that are very, uh, very uh, vulnerable. You don't want them stolen. But the biggest thing I can recommend is, is don't double click on stuff.